Hi everyone and welcome back to our last episode in our item inspection series. In this episode I'm going to show you a working example of how you set up multiple, uh, well, a different item from the item parent and make it work with regards to a door. So I've got a key mesh I've brought in here with the material. So I'm just going to go ahead and make this uh, in, as part of my game. So first of all I'm going to set up the key item. So I'm going to go into my items, right click my item parent and create a child blueprint item underscore key and open this up I'm going to click on the static mesh and change the mesh here to key like so um, then we're going to go to the class defaults and look at the default uh, values here for the variables so item name here being called bronze key and in my description here I'm a I can just type in whatever I like. So I'm going to go a uh, bronze rusty key, clearly showing um, wear and tear. It looks like it belongs to an old door or gate. That'll do. And we can click compile. Okay, so we've got some values there we can leave as is. So next we're going to close that because we're done with that. And we're going to make the uh, door. Well, actually, let's show you the item working. So I drag the key out, push play, and I can push E to pick up the key. And you can see it says press E to inspect bronze key now. And I push E to inspect it. And you can see the text there in the scroll box. It won't scroll because it's at the end already. Okay, I can rotate it around, go back. I can drop it. Okay, so now to make the door. So the door, I'm going to make a separate actor. And this will work slightly different from the doors I've made in my previous videos, uh, all because it's using this item system. So we're going to go door, and I'm just going to give it a basic static mesh. like so that'll do it and let's just place that into the world so you can see how that looks okay so the door doesn't need actually any other components because we're going to use the look at function to handle the ability to interact with it so to do that on my door I'm going to go to class settings and give it the interact interface because we can interact with it compile now I can call those two functions I've set up for it. So I can go look at and do event look at. And when I'm doing event look at, I'm going to get the player character here, get the HUD, update message, and I can type in whatever text I want it to show. So I actually want to change it to show two types of text. One if you have the key, one if you don't have the key. So before we do the HUD, we're going to get the player character and get the currently held item. And we want it to be checking whether or not this item is equal to a certain key that will open this door. So in my variables, I'm going to add a key variable. And the variable type for this would be an item parent. And click instance editable. Drag that out and get it. And you want to compare the currently held item to your key. So I'm going to go equals equals and compare the two together. Now if they're the same, going into a branch, I'll put in true, we're going to set it to say push E to use key. So update message here becomes press E to use the uh, actually let's do a format text box there because that would make it more interesting. Format text. Press E to use the. I right, put it there. Oh, hello. Back in there. Format text. Press E to use. Code bracket name. Code bracket. And the name for this is going to be a currently held item. Item name and plug that in like so. 
Next, we're going to uh, tell it to, on the false, update message again. But this time, it's going to say something else. It's going to say, um, find the key to open this door. Hit compile. Oh, the target, sorry, it's be HUD. There you go. Compile, and there you go. So let's test that that works. Push play, go up to the door, push E to use. Ah, wait. Oh, it's because I haven't given it a big key it needs. So this thing needs a key. So in here, we're going to use the eyedropper tool and select the key we want it to use. Push play. Find the key to open this door. Get the key. Press E to use the bronze key. Okay. So now to do the actual opening of the door and using the key, we can use the interact with event. So these two functions are from the interact interface, nothing else. Okay. So on here, we're going to actually make it, let's make a custom event here for open door. And we'll call that later on. So on interact with, we're going to check if the key is equal to the currently held item. Okay, so we're going to go get currently held item. Check if it's equal to the key. And if it is equal to the key, we're going to tell it to just make it open a door. So open door. And what we can also do is make it so it destroys the held item here. So I can go destroy actor. And the target is going to be that currently held item. So the key will be removed from the player's hand. And it will cause open door event. But now let's actually just quickly do it. Let's um, add timeline and go door position. And open it up. I'm not going too much depth here. If you want to see how timelines work, check out my door videos where I cover them a lot more, um, a lot more value, a lot more detail. Sorry. So here I'm going to go door height, and we're going to go shift click, shift click. First one's going to be set at zero zero, and the next one's going to be set at zero and minus two hundred. Not zero, one, sorry. So after one second, it will drop 200 frames. Okay, now I don't know if that would be long enough, or high enough, sorry, but we'll see. Change the link back to one, compile, and go back to my event graph. So my widget now, I've got this door height value here. I can drag the static mesh out and set the relative location. B equal in the Z to that door height. Compile, and there we go. So now I've got a door, I can pick up the key, I can interact with and open, and go through. And if I don't have the key, it won't open. And that's how you create a item from the item parent, and how you can use the interact interface for other objects inside the world if you can interact with them. It makes things a lot quicker and easier to get things going and you can do it with all sorts of things. Um, so if I wanted like a signpost to display a message on the screen, I can make a so simple signpost that will change its uh, code based on look at, um, whatever you like. It gives you a lot of freedom in that uh, regard. And that brings us to the end of this series. Thank you so much for watching this and uh, hopefully you enjoyed it and learned some things. Uh, if you like what I do, don't forget I have a Patreon where you can support me and get access to loads of videos before anyone else, plus many other benefits too. You can find it on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Big thank you to all of my supporters on Patreon, and big thank you to everyone who voted for this series um, as part of the Patreon rewards. Thanks again, don't forget to subscribe and like this video, and I'll see you all next time. Bye bye.